Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm very excited to show you today that the PlayStation 2 emulator EtherSX2 has been updated to version 1.4 for Apple Silicon Max. So if you didn't already know, EtherSX2 is a PS2 emulator which is native ARM and uses the Metal Graphics API and works great on M1 or M2 Apple Silicon Macs. And this version has some brand new features. For example, the ability to display your library with game covers, the integration of community achievements from the Retro Achievements website, and also a pretty hefty performance boost for some games including Final Fantasy X and Shadow of the Colossus. So today we're going to show you a full install tutorial of EtherSX2 1.0 and how to get some of these new features working and doing some game testing too on the M1 MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to the ethersx2.com website and go to the download section for Macs. So I'm going to leave a link to this website in the description and then what we're going to do is to scroll down here. Then we're going to download the latest version of ethersx2 at the time of recording which is 1.4. So I'm going to press download here, click allow and then allow EtherSX2 to download. So once the file is downloaded, we're going to double click on the zip to extract it. Then we're going to click on EtherSX2 and then drag this over to the Applications folder here and then let go. Then within Applications, we're going to find EtherSX2 here. Just double click to open it. Here it's saying that it can't be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. So in this case, what we do is hold down the Control key, click on EtherSX2 and then press Open. Now we can open it and bypass Gatekeeper. Now EtherSX2 is open. First thing that we need to do is to go to EtherSX2 at the top left here, click on Preferences, and then we need to click on this BIOS section on the sidebar here, and then we can add a BIOS. So I'm not going to explain exactly where to download your BIOS from. However, if you search the word PS2 BIOS into Google, then you'll be able to find a place to download this file. So PlayStation 2 BIOS normally has a file name like scph39001.bin. It's fairly easy to locate these online. Alternatively, you can dump it from your own PlayStation 2. So what we're going to do is to add our BIOS here by clicking open in Explorer. And then we can either copy the BIOS file into the EtherSX2 BIOS folder, which is opened up for us here, or we can change the location of the folder here by pressing browse and then locating our PS2 BIOS folder. Then we're going to select our US PlayStation BIOS here. And so now the BIOS selection is complete. The next thing I'm going to do is to click on game list here. I'm going to add a game folder. I'm going to click on this plus folder icon here. And then we're going to select our PlayStation 2 ISO folder. Press open. Here I'm asking it to scan this directory that I've selected. Press yes. Now you can see all of the games in the folder that I've added. So one of the new features of EtherSX2 that I haven't covered before is the fact that we now have a grid library. So this can now display game covers correctly. So when you first view the game covers, they're all blank. And in theory, you have to download them one by one. However, there is a tool here. If you click on tools at the top and click cover downloader, and then we need to paste in a set of URLs in order to grab the game covers. So this can also be done using this tool called the PCSX2 cover downloader. If I scroll down here, we're going to select this URL down here, control click, press copy, and then we're going to paste it into the box here, press paste. We need to check use serial file names and then press start. So now these game covers are downloading and now these are all listed correctly. So here in the top left, you can resize the game covers and it looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is to pair my Bluetooth controller. So I'm using a Sony DualSense here and in theory, most Bluetooth controllers should work. I'm holding on the option key and the home button until this flashes. So once that's flashing, I'm going to go to the system menu here, go to system settings. Then we'll click on Bluetooth icon here. And then we've got this option here to pair the DualSense wireless controller. Press connect. And now that's all connected up. So next we're going to go to settings at the top here, then click on controllers. So within global settings, we're going to enable STL input source. So this is for Sony controllers. And if you have an Xbox One or Series controller, then you want to use X input source instead. And then within controller one, we're going to select DualShock 2 as a controller type and then click automatic mapping here. Then we want to use STL2 PS5 controller for our DualSense controller here. Select that. And then our controller is all going to be set up now. So next thing I'm going to do is go to settings and then graphics. And then I'm going to be changing the aspect ratio to widescreen. And then within rendering, we can set the internal resolution of the game. I'm going to set mine to three times native, which is close to 1080p, which is the resolution that I'm recording at. So select that. Up here in renderer, we're going to select the Metro renderer, which is going to be the fastest one. However, it might be a little bit buggy, so you could switch to Vulkan or software. But here we're going to be testing at Metal. So next thing we're going to do is go to the emulation section here, and we're going to turn on enable widescreen patches, which is going to force many games to run in 16 by 9 aspect ratio 
ratio, so make sure that's turned on. So one of the last options here is the ability to enable achievements, which is also new in E3SX version 1.4. We're gonna click here, enable achievements. And in order to make use of this, we also have to log in as well. So we're gonna click on login here, and then we're gonna enter our retro achievements login. So if you don't have an account, just go to the retroachievements.org website and then register, and then enter your username and password and then log in. So now that we're logged into retro achievements, then we're able to earn achievements within games. So now that we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and test a game. So here in the top left, you can see that Katamari Damacy, we have zero out of 130 achievements. These are automatically downloaded by the Retro Achievements website. And the integration into EtherSX2 is pretty slick. It just pops up with a little sound notification. And this is a pretty neat little feature because the original PS2 didn't have notifications, of course. And all the achievements and state detections are provided by the community. It's still a fairly new feature for PS2, so not all achievements are available in every single game. There are currently 95 PlayStation 2 games supported, but more are being added all of the time. I'll leave a link in the description for this direct page where you can check out the newest achievements for PS2. So beyond the new features, the actual performance of PS2 games on Ether SX2 is very impressive. This is a native ARM emulator running the Metal Graphics API, and the majority of games run great at 60 frames per second at 1080p or higher. So games like Katamari Damacy work great. Let's try something a little bit more challenging. So this is Tekken 5 running at 1080p as well. Here the gameplay is very smooth and we can easily hit 60 frames per second, which is pretty much essential for a fighting game like Tekken 5. And of course the controller feels great using a Sony DualSense controller. So next up is Final Fantasy X, and this is one of the games that has received a substantial performance improvement with version 1.4 of Ether SX2. I believe the Steam version is actually playable on Mac using Parallels, however I would actually prefer the PlayStation 2 version through Ether SX2. Playing a game like this using save states and fast forwarding makes a lot more sense than trying to run the game through a virtual machine. So last up is Shadow of the Colossus, which is one of the hardest PlayStation 2 games to emulate. Here we're running at the widescreen aspect ratio at 1080p, and it's doing a solid 60 frames per second. So the developer Talrath has mentioned that Shadow of the Colossus should get around 5% of an increase in performance compared to previous versions of Ether SX2. Even in the intensive boss battles, we're not dipping below 60 FPS, so I consider this to be very solid. So it's not really like PlayStation 2 emulation it needs to get any faster, especially on the very fast M1 Apple Silicon Mac, even though we're using the base model. However, any increase in performance is obviously appreciated. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this Ether SX2 update video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.